Hey everybody, it's Daryl back again. I haven't put a video out in a while. I've been making videos, but I ain't had time to edit them and all that good stuff. But I'm walking around in the woods down here. I burnt these woods off a couple weeks ago. And let me show you what it's done. I know the wind's blowing. Look at that. There's green patches like that all over the woods out here now. And uh, that's a good thing. I was just back here walking around looking. Let me show y'all some stuff. Since we're doing a quick little video. There's a bunch of wire I got to get up out of here where there used to be hog pens back here back in the day. But if you've never seen a beaver dam, let me get you over here and show you this one. Now you probably can't tell, but that's an old mound right here. So it drops off on the back side. And that used to be a beaver dam back in the day. But uh, they've come back in here, started building dams back up again. I don't want to get too close to it because Mr. No Shoulders likes to hang out in. But they've started damming it up, which I don't really care that it dam it up, but uh, it's going to start backing the water up. So I got to get my fence in here. But if you'll see over here, there's a fence or a field on this side. And if they back it up that way, then it backs it up in the field on that side. So we kind of got to control the beavers back here, but there's two more dams. There's another one right over there. And then there's another one probably about 150 yards up, but that's how beavers work. Beavers, when they start damming a creek up or even like a small river or anything like that, they'll build small dams and then they'll gradually get bigger as they go. And the reason why they do that is so, uh, those smaller dams, even though they're under the water and not really holding back per se water, they're slowing the water down as it comes up the, the river or the creek or whatever else they got dammed up. And it keeps from blowing the big dam out when we have these big surges of rain and stuff. But uh, that's how it works with the beaver dams. I'm gonna come through here, all these small trees and stuff that are out here. <laughs> this is a good example of that. All these little small trees I got going through here, if they're not gonna produce nuts or anything that's gonna be beneficial for the pigs, the cows, or the sheep, and I'm probably gonna cut them down. Like these oak trees, these little oak trees, they're nice and all that good stuff, but they're not gonna produce anything. So we're probably gonna thin all these out. That way we can get all this grass growing here. I know, I'm gonna plant. I'm gonna plant some grass out here, probably Bermuda grass, something that doesn't need direct sunlight and I'll probably do some more research on that and see if there's some more grass out there that's better for better suited for this situation but I'll probably throw some uh, clover out here and all that other good stuff but I'm just gonna walk through and show y'all how this fire opened everything up it killed all these uh, we call them reeds I don't know what y'all call them they're like little small bamboo plants but they're not bamboo but it killed a whole bunch of it and it opened it up. So I'll be able to come in here and do some stuff. On second thought, let's just hang right here. Today is Saturday. I want to say it's the 10th. Yeah, because Wyatt's birthday was yesterday. Wyatt would have been six if he was still here. And on the 27th, he'll be gone for years. So on the 27th, He'll be gone as long as he was ever here on the earth. Uh, I would like to say that it's, how can I phrase this? The pain never goes away. You just learn to deal with it. Uh, that's the biggest thing when you first lose a, a kid or something like that, is just the initial shock of them being gone. And, uh, then you just learn to deal with your pain and just go on from there. But <laughs> I'm gonna try to hide behind this oak tree so I kind of scan around a little bit and let y'all see what's going on. But as you can see, like here, there's a lot of brush, but over there, there's not. But where the brush is not, we got little patches of green. 
these ferns are growing up, which I'm gonna probably do something about those. I'm pretty sure the cows that eat those down. I don't want a bunch of that stuff in here because it will shade the uh, the grass out. And if I have to, I'll come in here. <coughs> yes, I've still got a chest coat. I'll come through here and weed eat all this down and plant grass there. Let the grass come up. That way to give the grass a chance to uh, do what it needs to do. We'll hide behind this tree right here. Uh, but there's patches like that all over the place through the woods here. Especially where it <coughs> burnt really, really good. And uh, that's a good thing. There's, not, there's been nothing in these woods for as long as I can remember. And I'll be 45 in August. So this is good virgin territory. We'll call it virgin territory. Some people might call it organic. Uh, that word gets thrown around too much and I don't really use it a whole lot. But the biggest thing I need to do now is come through here and cut all these small trees and stuff down, which will be time consuming and pile it up in a big pile. And once it dries, burn it off and turn all this into a big pretty pasture. The cows will probably like this out here I got to figure out how I'm going to do my cow pastures and stuff because I want to fix it where they have to come back to the barn to get water. But I also want to fix it where I move them from paddock to paddock or from pasture to pasture. That way they don't overgraze stuff and it gives time for something else to come up. And uh, that way we can do our rotational grazing and everything like we want to do. I'm pretty sure I can figure out a way to fix it where they can come back here anytime they want to to get out of the sun and all that good stuff we'll figure it out but it's beautiful back here it will be really nice once i get everything like i want it to be done it's so much work to uh do stuff like this this is a big undertaking Hope told me the other day she said you don't do any small projects it's all big and she told me the other day she said honey you're never at home which kind of hurt my feelings a little bit, but I'm trying to get this done because it'd be a place for all of us to come over here and hang out. Uh, we'll be able to invite friends over here. We might try to have a little get together for the channel if people want to come over and hang out one weekend. We could probably do that. Uh, have a big bonfire and sit around and have a few beverages or cokes or pepsis or whatever you want to do and just sit around and talk about it whether it's chickens hogs cows sheep bees life in general whatever you want to talk about maybe we can do that one weekend when i get all my stuff done over here my biggest thing i need to do right now is straighten out a rim for that uh, uh cotton trailer that i got Cause I'm gonna use the cot trailer to go get my tin and come over here and put it on my building because my building is finally done where I can put tin on it. I just got to have time to do it. We finally got water over here. Uh, we're able to water the cows and the hogs without having to haul water everywhere and put it in a tank. So that's a good thing. Uh, <coughs> but that's about it. I'm gonna call this weekend. I'm actually not gonna call today on Saturday, but I'm gonna call tomorrow. So chances are I won't be able to get anything done. But uh, hopefully next week, we'll be able to get some stuff done florida louisiana alabama georgia are all getting hammered right now and we're supposed to be getting some rain off of it also i don't know how much rain we're gonna get off of it <laughs> hopefully it won't be too terribly bad but uh hopefully next week i can get down in here try to get my fence done that way i can get my cows that i've got up front we kind of got them blocked off because we've been trying to uh clean up the pastures and getting them leveled out so we can see them matter of fact i'll take you all up there right quick and show you that now before i couldn't bring the four wheeler back here because it was so thick but uh, as you can see we got plenty of stuff coming up now but uh, let me show, I was telling you about the wire a while ago. Maybe the, the wind won't be too terribly bad on this. See that wire here? It's like a hog fence. But we got runs of this everywhere through here. And I was thinking of maybe leaving this one here because our 
past our fence is going to be right there but i don't want the cows to come over here and get all tangled up in it but see how it's all graded in that pine tree that's going to be the fun stuff to try to get it figured out but uh over here's where me and Waylon was at when the wind shifted on us and choked us out and caused my chest cold but let's go around up front and i'll show you what we've done with the pastures As you can see, we've got it dissed up pretty good. All the pastures so far. And uh, if we get a, uh, a good rain, I think after that rain, I'm gonna get it with somebody about renting a grain drill and bringing it over here and go ahead and plant the grass and try to get all this going. I've been cleaning up around the cow shelter a little bit today trying to get some grass mowed trying to get everything cleaned up i was walking around looking at the uh concrete slabs we got over here and trying to figure out what we can do with it there's a concrete slab right there and then there's where the old hog house used to be at right there on this side that big uh pile of concrete and stuff i got to figure out what to do with the concrete that's over here and then i got to look and see if i can actually use those concrete slabs that are over here. We might, if we get to the point where, we, where we're being pretty productive and being able to sell our products, maybe we can use that uh, elevated concrete pad for maybe a walk-in cooler or something. But that's what it looks like over here. As you can see, it looks like we're fixing to get some rain. I was over there a while ago. I got a beehive that I need to do some work for, but on because the bottom boards rotted off. <coughs> I thought it had died out, but evidently it hasn't because I was over there a while ago and there were some bees flying around. And that's not a hive you can just mess with. Uh, you've got to have smoke and a, a veil on because uh, I was just standing probably 10 foot from them and got popped in the neck. So they're not the friendliest bees in the world. Maybe that's the reason why they survived. Normally you're pissy bees. You can't get rid of them even if you want to. But uh, I've got to do some more work with my fence. Like I was saying a while ago, I've got to uh, run it across the back of the back here where the uh, water is at and try to get all that done. I'm gonna do I'm probably going to do four strands. So I was going to do five strands, use the bottom one as a uh, hot, and then a, a, a ground, a hot, a ground, and a hot. But uh, I think what I might do is move that bottom wire up just a little bit. That way, I don't know. I got to get my lawnmower over here and figure it out. I want room enough where I can move up under the edge of the fence with my lawnmower and uh, not have to worry about tearing stuff up trying to do that. Uh, trying to make this as low maintenance as I can. I'm going to have enough room on the outside the fence to go around with the lawnmower. And then, of course, we're going to have room on the inside to uh, come through too. But uh, the pigs is fighting. But I want to uh, have enough room where I ain't got to worry about hitting the wire. Because I don't want to have to unplug the fence. And then worry about busting insulators and all that other good stuff. But that's what's been going on here. Uh... I need to do some hive inspections. The only reason why I didn't do them today is because I'm trying to get all this stuff done. Uh, 
I don't know if I've put those videos out yet or not. I'll have to look at my stuff, but I did some stuff where I rotated some boxes, then I went through and checkerboarded them. That way they won't swarm on me. And uh, they should still be good to go. I do need to check them and make sure the ones that are single, uh, single stack that see if they need another hive body put on them and uh, get that done. Maybe we'll be able to have some honey this year too. So, but that's what we got going on right now. Thank y'all for subscribing. All my new people, welcome. My Bumblebee video for some reasons took off again and uh, we've been picking up some subscribers off of it. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not and you're watching this video and this is the first video you've seen on this channel, hit the subscribe button. Don't cost anything, helps boost the channel and uh, helps me get motivated to make more videos. So appreciate y'all, we love y'all and as always, we'll see you on the next one.